Welcome, y'all. Welcome to Fishing Merle Beach. What's up? So I didn't get to do a video today. So uh, I'm going to kind of go over some of the different lures we use, um, how we use them, why we use them, what they do. Um, you see there's a bunch of them here. There's a bunch of other stuff. We got wire, smaller planers, bigger planers. Uh, I'll try to explain all this, your lines, how to kind of get an idea what lines you need to use, when to use them, all of that. So uh, I guess the easiest way to start off, we're going to go from uh, drones to Clarks. Okay, these little things right here. These are called drones. They got a different style to them. They're bent. They they just they look a little different. They work a little different. These right here give you a lot more action in the water. Um, these are great in basically to me personal from just fishing them. This small and larger. Whenever you go beyond this size and you get down into more like one of these sizes, because um, they do make drones this small. I wish I had one, but I don't. Um, they do tend to torque your line up a little bit. I'm going with the bridle system. I really like the bridle system right now. Um, they don't tend to torque the line so bad, so I actually did put some smaller drones that the captain had on the boat today. But if you're running a conventional style where you, you hand line it in, I would probably say don't really go much smaller than this. Now, this is kind of a beginner's guide on all this stuff. If you've been fishing for a while, I'm just preaching to the choir. But um the reason you have different colors and different things is whenever you get a spanish mackerel the best thing you'll do is kind of like you do when you're trout fishing um instead of looking in the rocks to see if there's mud or bugs um, when you grab them they tend to puke and you want to see kind of what they're chewing on if you see a bunch of bright silver stuff then run a basic silver um i don't buy silver reason is this is a sticker the greens the pinks these are stickers you can pull it off if you need to honestly the spanish mackerel bite them off if the water's real dark, dungy, it's been raining, uh, it's got bad clear, uh, water clarity, the gold is always to go to. Um, always. I mean, 99 times out of 100, the gold. Um, these, these, these smaller drones right here, or I guess actually a little bigger drones, but still pretty small. Because when you kingfish, this is what, when we talk about bigger drones, this is what we're talking about. So these are kind of like smaller drones, but for these drones... Um, I drag one behind the boat when we're Spanish fishing as much as I can. Um, reason is, is kings will chew on these and Spanish actually eat these pretty well. This uh, thing I just found out. Um, if you're down here in the Carolinas, you know what bonitas are. Bonitas like these things a lot. I'll put that drone against bonitas over Clarks any day of the week. Um, if you're new to this kind of stuff, the biggest thing that will bite you batches of hooks get bad no matter what you buy so i know last year we had some problems with hooks with the whole covid thing but um, every time before you set one of these out you need to kind of give a little wiggle test because what happens is there's a screw in here i don't know if you can see it but there's a screw right about there that screw will back off um it's just like anything else you know this thing's underwater spinning that's what it does it spins underwater when a fish hits it hits at different angles it will back that screw off. If you don't make sure they're tight, you will lose them. Best thing that happens, and the worst thing when the hook breaks, is they rust in place. Because when these things rust in place, the screw is no longer an issue. You also have fixed style. So this right here, as you see, doesn't have a screw. Although this one does, so it's not just a drone thing. Or a Clark thing. This, this drone also has a screw. These have a bevel down where it's just pushed down. It doesn't come out. Bad part with that is, when the hook goes... I'm not good enough to get another little hook in there and bend it back over. I'm sure there's some professional fishermen that are. I'm just not. Um, you got different size planers. I've only got two planers here at the different uh, size de different de uh, size planers at the house. This right here, I believe, is a number four planer. No, it's the number three planer. There is numbers on them in the center. I'm not going to unravel that. But there's numbers. The reason I'm showing number one. The bigger the planer the bigger the weight the bigger the weight the further down she goes the further down she goes you're, you're playing the water column game um, good advice you want to run a bigger spoon you run 
a bigger planer. The reason is, these things go on the very top of this. Let me show you with this number one. All this stuff hooks in at the very, very top right here. So your line goes through here, it goes down to the bottom, it goes through the depth you set it, and it pulls through the water. When a fish hits it, it hits this line, shoots it up to the top of the water. The planer this small, dragging something this big, it's easy for this planer to just sit there and trip all day long with those bigger spoons. It, it can't hold as much pressure. So if you want to run a bigger planer, you're going to have to run at least a number two to run a bigger uh, drawn spoon. That's always a good thing to remember. Um, that really comes in more for king fishing. Um, I don't know anybody pulls them for Wahoo, but king fish is a really big deal. Uh, Mahi guys, they, they pull them sometimes. Um, good idea, especially if you're kind of new to this. A wire, take a little small piece of wire. You know, it ain't got to be forever long. Just take a piece of wire, you know, that long. Put it through the end of the line here. Clip it on to the end. You know, you can do like this. Th this is made for sharp, but... You can either crimp it down, they make bullet crimps, you know, round crimps that go right through, speed crimps, whatever. And that will keep you from breaking uh, spoons off because you will get spoons bit off. I don't care how good you are, you're going to have spoons get bit off. If you haven't, it's because you're not catching fish. Um, the other big problem you're going to have is you're going to have to set up with line. And anybody knows, you know, <laughs> an unexperienced person you're going to hear everything from you can't ever run monofilament to you can't ever pull with you know hybrid fluorocarbon um, look there's no such thing as an absolute okay uh, I'm not a car salesman I'm not a lure salesman I'll tell you from experience in the last three and a half years of doing this every single day you up until this year twice a day um, 30 pounds 35 pounds and higher I don't have a problem pulling the drones of any sort with a 30, 35, 40 pound uh, monofilament. I don't. Yes, I pull leader line uh, fluorocarbon 50 pound with them too. I mean, you know, I, we do go out and catch big boy kings. Um, with the smaller ones, I will tell you, if you drop under that 30, you know, 30 mark, 35 mark, um, I personally, I'm, I'm, I say fluorocarbon. Uh, there's a couple reasons for that. Um, minus the whole stretch thing, you know, we're not bass fishing. You're going to hear, you know, it stretches, it does this. That's not the problem. The big problem you're going to have is memory in the line. And that's, that's a big deal. And on top of that, you're going to have more vibration. And I don't understand how vibration, how the line works different, but you know some of these guys out here these captains they've been doing this for 30 years and when they're saying they're catching more fish on fluorocarbon you know and they they've got they've been fishing as long as i've been alive you know back deck captains you know putting food on the table paying the bills off fishing um i take what they say serious you know and i'm not going to try to tell somebody that's you know 72 years old that's been fishing since you know the 50s that they're wrong so you know you can just kind of heat a piece of advice on that um I have no problem running, you know, 80 pound, 50 pound tests with, with big stuff. Even with these guys right here, I pull um, 40 pound mono and I'll pull, you know, like four fathoms of that. And then I'll put five fathoms of 80 or 50 pound or 45 pound um, fluorocarbon or monofilament, depending on. I like fluorocarbon. I, I like because it don't speed it, you know, twist up so much. but. I'll put 50 pound um, fluorocarbon on it and I'll put you know four fathoms of that the reason I always try to put a big one on the back for these is because these catch more Spanish and I found this out this year I'm catching more Spanish with these guys than I am with these guys but I put this in the water for kings and um, I actually had it bit off last week well, a couple of videos ago if you're watching I pulled up and ended up um, I ended up getting a bite uh, my uh, drone ended up getting bitten off so I've been running the drone lately and if you'll go back and watch those videos of that long line my longest one out is all drones and I was catching more on that particular lure which is actually this one black with the green on it than any other one now I'll tell you right now and I hope that the people that that work at this drone place listen to me 
this uh, shiny little beautiful sticker sucks. It's garbage. This thing, I put it in the water, and I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's little cuts there, and this thing rolls up and peels off in two days. It is absolutely horrendous. This is the worst tape known to man. I think they got it at the Dollar General on a deal and put it on lures. It is horrible. I mean, it it's horrible. Your tape sucks. Um, and I mean, you can tell even with this one just sitting here, and it's already starting to peel off. Now, the silver on silver, I don't care. That just gives extra flash. However, green is a very, very hot color down here. We catch a lot of them because we have these things down here, um, green herring and uh, or fat back or uh, whatever you want to call them. We call them uh, green herring down here and, or greenies. And we catch the daylights out of them. And their only job is to feed the ecosystem. They're, you know, they're this big and all they do is get eaten. That's all they do all day. They, you know, little four inch fish, paper mouths. Um, so that's why that green to me works so well. Um, pinks do work, especially in the summertime. You've got what you call electric chicken as well, which will be a pink and a green together. They'll put the, you know, the, the green here and the pink here or whatever. Um, electric, we call them electric chickens. They work phenomenal in the dead of summer when nothing else wants to hit. Your size up Clark spoons, um, I call them the shot in the darks. The only time I really enjoy running this bigger one, honestly, is when they're just dead silver. And the reason is it's just a little bit bigger bait fish and it kind of homes those bigger Spanish in. Um, on the back of the boat, I call them wall hangers. You know, you can get some really nice Spanish mackerel with a little bit bigger Clark spoon. With that being said, they make Clark spoons that are, they're big. I mean, I'm not exaggerating, they're, you know, six inches. <laughs> Keep one thing in mind if you ever go out in the ocean and fish. Elephants eat peanuts. Okay, I mean, I can show you stuff that, you know, we bluefin fish with and we yellowfin fish with and the same fish eats both and the size difference are, are astonishing. But they eat the same thing. You know, you can't go out there to catch a king mackerel and take a, you know, and, and take a something that's, you know this big and try to catch a king or try to catch a spanish mackerel okay you, you can't do it you really want to stay in the right size um the reason that i do a lot of videos on spanish is because if you have a boat and you know if you're watching this video and you're just getting into fishing it can be overwhelming you know how do you set out lines how do you know which one how do you know which you know planers to use how do you set up your boat um if you have any questions on that, let me know. I'm more than willing to help you. You don't need $800 rods and reels to go out there and catch some. You don't go out, you know, honestly, you go out to the, the buoy. You go out about a mile, throw them in, and start looking for birds. Um, start looking for tide lines. If you don't know what a tide line is, it's where you'll see real pretty water and real ugly water meet. You know, you fish those tide lines. Um stay on the radio even if you're not talking keep it on until you have a good baseline understanding of what's going on because spanish mackerel fishing in the ocean is one of the funnest easiest lightheartedest things to do you know if the water's nice and you want to take the youngins out for three hours you don't burn a bunch of fuel you're not running away out you can take you know the family ski boat on a nice day and have a blast catching spanish mackerel when you troll, you need to be somewhere between six and about seven and a half knots. Um, you can bump it up a little bit. You can go down a little bit, but six and a half to seven and a half is kind of, you know, somewhere around in there. Um, don't freak out too much. You got to remember you're in the ocean. The boat's going, the wave's going to push you. You know, you're not going. It's not like in a car. You're not going to set it and forget it. There's no cruise control out there. Um, that's yeah, really about all I got y'all. If you have any questions or you wonder about anything, um, let me know. If anybody's looking to, to hit up a charter, let me know. Uh, if you want to do uh, inshore stuff or if you want to go flounder fishing, I got some buddies that do that. I can give you some phone numbers to some people. I don't do anything with it. I don't make a dime on it. It's just winning things. You know, I've got some friends that do it and just trying to show them some love. So, I want to say thanks to everyone and thanks to uh, Mr. Steve Wise for letting me 
videotape on his boat and um, hopefully y'all find this a little bit of a uh, beginners maybe some intermediate stuff in there um, hope y'all find it informational I appreciate it y'all don't forget to like share and subscribe Don't forget, please share, like, and subscribe. Peace.